Well, good evening. Here we are again on another Tuesday night, but this is the last Tuesday night for our Amateur Extra class. I want to commend uh, those of you who have uh, stuck with us. Thank you so much. We really appreciate it. Uh, we've been covering uh, the uh, Amateur Extra class license manual from the American Radio Relay League. That's this one. I always grab the book. Uh, the uh, 12th edition, uh, the green cover, uh, and uh, we covered uh, the 11 chapters inside. Uh, and tonight what we're going to be doing is taking some practice tests uh, together uh, as a group like we did at the end of uh, last uh, week's session. And um, we'll see how we do, try to find some uh, strengths and weaknesses. Uh, but what I'd like you all to do, and Doug if you'd go to the PowerPoint, is for you all to get ready uh, to plan ahead and try to figure out where it is you will be taking uh, your uh, Amateur Extra uh, test. Uh, you can find a test session uh, maybe from your local amateur radio club, your local ham club. You can do a Google, Google search. Um, or uh, you can uh, uh, go here to hamstudy.org stroke sessions uh, and find a session maybe in your area or one that would be online. Uh, and uh, so finding a, a test session and setting a date uh, for when you're going to uh, take your test, uh, that's uh, very motivating. Also, remember to take practice tests like we're going to do tonight. And I don't care where you take them, uh, whether it be from the American Radio Relay League's uh, App Spot site um, or from um, other uh, sites on the internet or apps on your phone. There are 620 questions in the in the pool and if you think about it if a test is 50 questions and if you never repeated a question on a test you'd have to take at least 13 practice sessions to cover all of the questions so have you taken 13 practice tests um, you really need to take more because you'll find there will be duplications you may see some questions tonight for example that we saw last week um, so that's going to happen so keep taking practice tests uh, and uh, keep exercising uh, the muscle between your ears uh, and you'll do just fine. So are there any questions from anyone here in the group about anything we've covered so far before we get started? Just go ahead and unmute. Now, now I just, uh, Gary, I just want to thank you. Uh, I took my test on Saturday and I'm fortunate enough to pass it. And so I uh, just want to appreciate you and Dave and all your hard work and and all the stuff there. So uh, I will, probably won't be hanging around for the practice test, if that's okay. So, but I wanted to tell you personally in the group how much I've enjoyed the group also, Gary. Well, absolutely, Barry. And do you want to share with the group, um, was the test session kind of what you expected? Actually, I thought the test was a lot easier than I had imagined. I took a bunch of practice tests and a couple of the practice tests kicked my butt and uh, I went and missed anywhere from three to 10 on the practice test. And I missed three on the uh, the test I took in Seneca on Saturday. So I uh, was real surprised actually. That I thought it was a little bit easier. Maybe it was because all the excellent prep that you have provided, you and Dave have provided. So. Yeah, that's it, that's it, that's it. <laughs> no, it's you, because you did the studying. Uh, so you get all the credit and I'm real proud of you, Barry. And um, Yep, uh, please tell others uh, about the channel, uh, the YouTube channel and the classes. And uh, yeah, we want uh, as many people as possible to get their license and to get their upgrades. So um, absolutely. All right, any other comments or questions before we get started? Congratulations to Barry. Absolutely. Fantastic. Absolutely. And Barry, is, did you used to have another call, K04EEF, or has this always been your call, KY4EF? Well, uh, one of the amazing things about it, uh, the examiner, the uh, VE turned my stuff in yesterday and it came out today and they changed my call. Okay. So the new one is KY4EF. That's correct, Bill. But uh, it was really quick. I mean, I was surprised. Thank you very much. All right, let's go ahead and be quick ourselves. Let's go ahead and get started. Uh, practice test number two. Um, if you would get out a piece of paper and uh, mark it down 1 through 50 um, so that um, uh, you, you know, as we have the, uh, the questions pop up, uh, you'll try to keep synchronized uh, so we don't uh, 
uh, <laughs> skip anything. I'm going to spotlight um, the uh, image here so that the questions will stay up. I want to wish you good luck. Stay cool. Don't sweat it. And here comes question number one, uh, which is a picture. Oh, on the Smith chart shown, what is the only straight line shown? And because the writing is so small, I'm going to read them. A, the resistance axis. B, the current axis. C, the reactance axis. Or D, the voltage axis. What is the only straight line? And like we did last week, when you're done, if you just kind of put your hand up briefly, just so that I see. All right, we're going to move on to question number two. We can always go back. I think this is big enough, I don't have to read it. And question number three. And question number four. And question number five. If I need to slow down, just tell me. So that was question number five. Here's question number six, and for any late arrivals, we can go back at the end. All right, and question number seven. to move on question number eight And question number nine.
And question 10. And question number 11. And question 12. And question 13. Question 14. And question 15. Question 16. And question 17. And question 18. Question 19. And question 20.
And question 21. And question 22. And question 23. Question 24. And question 25. Question 26. We can always come back to these. Question 27. And question 28, what magnitude of voltage gain can be expected from the circuit when R1 is 10 ohms and RF is 470 ohms? What magnitude of voltage gain can be expected? A, 24, B, 94, C, 47, D, 0 0.21. And question 29. How is the Q of an RLC series resonant circuit calculated? All right, and question 30.
And question 31. And question 32. And question number 33. And question 34. And question 35. And question 36. And question 37. And question 38. Question 39. Question 40. And question 41.
All right, and question 42. And question 43. And question 44. And question 45. And question 46. And question 47. And question 48. All right, and question 49. And last question, 50. All right, so we've gone over all 50 questions. Uh, if you want to go back uh, to any, go ahead and unmute and just let me know. 43, please. 43. There we are.
Okay. Anything else? Any other questions? Okay, and uh, thirty six for Doug, and then yep. We'll go in whatever order. I'm going from the bottom. That's fine. And I thought I saw Bill unmute there. Well, we've got two bills tonight. That could be confusing. All right. Anyone else? Any other questions? Five and six. Five and six. All right. There's five. Okay, and then here's six. All right, any other questions? 14 and 15. 14 and 15, absolutely. So there's 14. Okay. And then here's 15. Are there any other questions we want to review? I, we had two people talking at once. I heard 22, is that correct? Two. One and two. Oh, one and two. There we go. Okay. Oh, yeah, right, because we had a latecomer. Sorry. Yeah, you're right. All right, so there's question number one on the Smith chart. What is the only straight line? A, the resistance axis. B, the current axis. C, the reactance axis, or D, the voltage axis? So that's question number one. And question two. All right. Anything else? 22. 22. Lucky 22. I feel like bingo. All right, there we go. Just wondering what's going to happen when they improve the photovoltaic cells. <laughs> you can throw off this answer. Yeah, oh, yeah. There's a physics reason why it's always that way. All right, any others? 27, please. 27. Okay. All right. Any other numbers? Any other questions? Remember, it'll be much easier in a test session. We'll have it on paper. You can take as long as you need. It's 
So the question. There's an observation. We didn't seem to need our calculator on on many of these. Is that, that typical of um, the extra exam? That's that's not uncommon. Um, uh, if you get lucky, <laughs> and you probably mm -hmm. are only going to have one or maximum two uh, calculator questions, I think on the test if if you did. So you're, you're spotlighted. Um, am I still? I thought I canceled it. No, I canceled it. So if they talk now, somebody say something. Hello, Dave here. See, You're good. yeah, okay, we're working now. <laughs> Just all right. Yeah. Let's let's check uh, answer number one. On the Smith chart, what is the only straight line? A the resistance axis. That's the straight line. If I can make a straight line going up there, that's the resistance axis. Two. What logical operation does an OR gate perform? D. It produces a logic 1 and its output if any or all inputs are logic 1. That's an OR gate. 3. What spread spectrum communications technique uses a high speed binary bit stream to shift the phase? That's the direct sequence method. And four, the most useful characteristic of a Zener diode, constant voltage drop. They're used as voltage references. And five, which of these has the narrowest bandwidth? PSK31 on this list, only 31 hertz wide or thereabouts. And six, what usually occurs if a Yagi antenna is designed for maximum gain? The front back front to back ratio decreases. So that's 6C. And 7, what is the radiation pattern of two quarter wave vertical antennas spaced a half wavelength apart and fed 180 degrees out of phase? That's a figure 8 pattern oriented along the axis of the array. And 8, a Wilkinson divider D is used to divide power equally between 250 ohm loads. And 9. What type of equipment is commonly used to implement an amateur radio mesh network? A wireless router, a Wi-Fi router uh, running custom firmware. And 10. What is the time constant of a circuit having two 220 microfarad capacitors and two 1 mega ohm resistors all in parallel? So capacitors in parallel add, so 220 plus 220 in, is 440. Resistors in parallel divide or go down, so two 1 meg resistors become 0.5 meg. So 0.5 meg times 440 micro gives you 220 seconds, 10 C. Which type of atmospheric structure can create a path for microwave propagation? That's a temperature inversion, 11 C. 12, what is tri-state logic? No, not New York, New Jersey, and anyway. Logic devices with 0, 1, and high impedance output states, 12 C. And what information is contained in the lookup table of a direct digital synthesizer? Those are the amplitude values that represent the desired waveform. So it'll have the various amplitude values of a sine wave, for example, so 13b. 14, which of the following may reduce or eliminate intermod interference? That's a properly terminated circulator at the output of the repeater's transmitter. The circulator is kind of like a one-way valve. And 15, which of the following can be used to measure the Q? The Q of a circuit is directly proportional to the bandwidth of the circuit. They're directly related. 15D. And which of the following describes a method of establishing Earth-Moon-Earth -Earth contacts? That's the whole uh, point of JT65. It's time synchronous transmissions alternating from each station. 17. What might be the cause of a loud roaring or buzzing? Well, any of these things could do it. Arcing contacts, an advertising display that's malfunctioning, or a bad doorbell or doorbell transformer, all of those can generate RF noise. 
And 18, what might be the penalty for a volunteer examiner who fraudulently administers or certifies an exam? Uh, they can get their license re revoked, their operator license, and their station license. And 19, what is the main reason to use a charge controller to prevent battery damage due to overcharging? 20, what circuit is added to an FM transmitter to boost the higher audio frequencies? Transmitters get pre-emphasis, receivers get de-emphasis, so pre-emphasis network. What determines the PEP to average power ratio of a single sideband phone signal? The speech characteristics. Not only the voice that uh, is modulating, but is there compression? Uh, is there other um, sort of uh, processing going on? 22, the open circuit voltage produced by a full fully illuminated silicon photocell, 0 0.5 volts. I think maybe gallium nitride and some of the others might have different voltages. But silicon, 0 0.5. And 23, what is one advantage of a pi matching network over an L matching network? I'm not sure we were strong enough on this one, but the Q of pi networks can be controlled by the ratios of the components. So the Q chain can be changed. 24, which of the following types of communications may be transmitted to amateur stations? Communications incidental to the purpose of amateur service and remarks of a personal nature. 25, what frequencies are authorized to an amateur station? It depends on the control operator. It goes to the license class of the control operator. 26, what type of digital signal processing filter is used to generate a single sideband signal? So this is telling you it's happening in a computer, digital signal processing, and that's a Hilbert transform filter. It's easy to do in software, harder to do in hardware. And 27, how can an RF power amplifier be neutralized? You feed a 180 degree out of phase um, a sample back to the uh, input. And in this circuit, what uh, is the magnitude of the voltage gain? The bigger number divided by the smaller number, 470 divided by 10 is 47. How is the Q of an RLC series circuit calculated? It's the reactance of either the inductance or the capacitance divided by the resistance. And what does the 304A solar parameter measure? It's angstroms, 304 angstroms, UV emissions at that frequency, or wavelength. Which of the following has the largest effect on an SDR receiver's dynamic range? It's the analog to digital converter at the uh, input, and it's sample width in bits. What is the approximate maximum range uh, for transequatorial? That's 5,000 miles. What is the disadvantage of decreasing the number of wire segments in a model below 10? The computed feed point impedance may be incorrect. Which of the following component package types would be most suitable for use at frequencies above HF? So we're talking VHF and above surface mount devices because they don't have any leads so they don't have any lead inductance to deal with 35 why is it important to keep lead lengths short to avoid unwanted inductive reactants lead inductance another way to say it and which is generally true for low band antennas receiving antennas the noise is so high that gain over a dipole is not important, but receiving antennas may be immune to the noise. So you can hear signals, like a beverage, for example, beverage antenna. 37, a satellite that appears to stay in one position is a geostationary satellite, 37A. 38, what is the uh, significant difference? All of those. Foam dielectric has higher velocity factor, foam dielectric has lower loss, foam dielectric has a lower safe operating voltage. 
39, why are there separate E and H field MPE limits? Well, because E and H field radiation peaks can occur at different locations. The body reacts to those differently and ground reflections are different for each. So all of those choices are correct. And 40, what is the name of the diagram used to show the phase relationship between impedances at a given frequency? Think Star Trek, get out your phaser. It's a phaser diagram. And when using a transceiver that displays the carrier frequency of phone signals, which of the following displayed frequencies represents the lowest frequency at which a properly adjusted lower sideband emission will be totally within the band? Well, sideband emissions are about 3 kilohertz wide, so you want to stay 3 kilohertz above the lower band edge because lower sideband is going 3 kilohertz below the indicated frequency. And 42, what signals SSTV receiving software to begin a new picture line. Dave gave this. The answer is always tone frequencies. Somehow to do with tone frequencies. And 43, which of the following amateur stations may transmit one-way communications? Space stations, beacon stations, or telecommand stations? And what is the primary advantage of using a toroid? Toroidal cores can find most of the magnetic field within the core material. And 45, how does the modulation index uh, vary with RF carrier frequency? It doesn't. It does not depend on the RF carrier frequency at all. And 46, how does DC input impedance at the gate of an FET compare with that of a bipolar? FETs have higher input impedance. 47. Which of the following factors affect the feed point impedance of an antenna? The primary thing, um, we showed you that chart, antenna height. Antenna height can have a lot of impact on feed point impedance. 48. What is the definition of symbol rate? That's the rate at which the waveform changes to convey information. 49. Which of the following is an advantage of using an antenna analyzer? Antenna analyzers have built-in RF sources. You don't need an external RF source. And 50. When may an amateur station send a message to a business? The pecuniary word comes up when neither the amateur nor his or her employer has a pecuniary monetary interest in the communications. So how did you do? You don't have to tell me, but you can get up to 13 questions wrong and still pass. So uh, you, hopefully you're still on the board. Um, hopefully it's not disheartening. Let's take a five-minute break right now, uh, and we'll come back and we'll go through an, another practice test together. Um, and you may or may not need your calculator. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's the, here's the timer.
And we are back, and I'm just looking over at the uh, meters there. I've got audio on uh, uh, Zoom and on uh, YouTube. So uh, thanks for hanging in there with us, and uh, we're going to have another practice test uh, here uh, to see how we're doing with the uh, Amateur Extra uh, license questions. Uh, so play along. Uh, here's uh, exam number three. So, Doug, if you would, uh, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, spotlight that so we lock that in place. Um, again, if you would, uh, find a piece of paper, uh, number it 1 to 50. There are 50 questions. Um, let's see how we're doing and uh, try to get out of here a little early tonight, if we could. All right. Good luck to you. Here's question number one. And question number two. And question number three. Question number four. And question number five. Question number six. And question number seven. Question number eight. We can always go back to these. And Question nine. And question ten.
And question 11. Gesundheit. And question 12. And question 13. And question 14. And 15. and 16. And question 17. And question 18. And question 19. And question 20. And question 21.
And question 22. And question 23. And question 24. Question 25. All right, and 26. And twenty seven. And twenty eight. And twenty nine. And question thirty. And question 31. And question 32.
And question 33. And question 34. And question 35. And 36. And 37. And question 38. And question 39. And question 40. And question 41. Question 42. And question 43.
And question 44. And 45. And 46. And 47. And 48. Forty nine, and the last question, question fifty. Any questions that we uh, would like to go back over, just unmute and uh, let me know, and uh, I will go ahead and unspotlight myself. 43, please. 43, okay. Okay. All right. Any other numbers? 37. 47. 37. 37. There we go. All right, any others? 36, please. 36, that's easy. All right, any others? Uh, 
How are we feeling? All right, let's keep on keeping on. Up, down, mm -hmm. let's see. Question one, what do Hepburn maps predict? That's tropospheric propagation. And two, which of the following types of communications may be transmitted to amateur stations in foreign countries? Communications incidental to the purpose of the amateur service and remarks of a personal nature. Hey, we saw this question earlier tonight, so there are repeats. 2C. Gary, what was one? I missed the, the letter. Uh, B. Bravo. Probability B. Got it. Thank you. Three. Bill should remember this one. What is the approximate ratio of PEP to average power in a sideband phone signal? About two and a half to one. 3B. And four, how does the gain of an ideal op amp vary with frequency? Ideal op amp, it doesn't. 4C. Of course, there is no such thing as an ideal op amp, but. What is the principle of a method of moments analysis? 5C, a wire is modeled as a series of segments, each having a uniform value of current. And six, what are the principal frequencies that appear at the output of a mixer, mixer math, the two original input frequencies along with their sum and difference frequencies, 6b. And seven, which of these modes has the narrowest bandwidth? Still PSK31, 7c. Eight, what logical operation does an OR gate perform? It produces a logic 1 at its output if any or all inputs are logic 1, so 8D. 9. What actions should you take if your digital message forwarding station forwards a communication that violates the rules? D. Discontinue forwarding the communication as soon as you become aware of it. 10. What is frequency division multiplexing? Think about baseband the key word, two or more information streams are merged into a baseband, which then modulates the transmitters, 10C. 11, which of the following is good practice when using a scope probe? Keep the signal ground connection as short as possible, 11B. And 12, how many times per second is a new frame transmitted in a fast scan TV system? 30 frames a second, 12C. And why is RF attenuation used when direction finding? 13B, to prevent receiver overload, which reduces pattern nulls. And 14, what is the primary cause of inductor self-resonance? Resonance requires inductance and capacitance. So, 14A, interturn capacitance. 15, how is impedance in polar form converted to the equivalent admittance? Uh, you can do this graphically by taking the reciprocal of the magnitude and changing the sign of the angle. 15C. And what three test loads are used to calibrate an RF vector network analyzer D, short circuit, open circuit, and 50 ohms. 17, where is the impedance of a pure resistance plotted on rectangular coordinates on the horizontal axis? 17C. And 18C, what is the purpose of digital store and forward? C, to store digital messages in the satellite for later download by other stations. And 19, what technology is used to track in real time balloons? APRS, Automatic Packet Reporting System, although some people say Automatic Position Reporting System, which might provide you with a clue. 20, what is antenna bandwidth? D, the frequency range over which an antenna satisfies a performance requirement. Most of the time we put standing wave ratio as the performance requirement. 
20D. 21. Which of the following is a type of off-center fed dipole antenna? It's a dipole of fed, fed approximately one-third the way from one end with a four-to-one ballon. 21C, off-center fed dipole. 22. Which of the following is a property of a T network with series capacitors? Capacitors um, will pass high frequencies best and if they're in series, so it's a high pass filter. 22B. And 23, most common configuration of an opto isolator, it's an LED as an input and a phototransistor as the output. 23D. 24, which of the following oscillator circuits are used in variable frequency oscillators? Cole puts, where you vary the capacitance, and Hartley, where you vary the inductance. 24A. And 25, what privileges are authorized in the United States to persons holding an amateur license granted by Canada? The operating terms and conditions of the Canadian Amateur Service License not to exceed U.S. Amateur Extra Class privileges. 26A, which of the following describes the problems called, caused by poor dynamic range? Spurious signals caused by cross-modulation will occur and descents from strong adjacent signals. 27, what is an advantage of CMOS? It uses less power. 27D. And 28, how may data rate how may data rate be increased without increasing bandwidth using a more efficient digital code? 28B. And 29, what usually occurs if a Yagi antenna de is designed for maximum forward gain, solely for maximum forward gain? The front to back ratio will decrease. 29D. 30, what type of digital signal processing filter is used to generate an SSB signal? Again, in a computer, so it's easy with software, a Hilbert transform. So 30B. 31, what's the approximate physical length of an air-insulated parallel conductor transmission line that is electrically one-half wavelength long? So 14.1 megahertz is in the 20 meter band. Open uh, air-insulated parallel line has a velocity factor of close to one. So if you're in the 20 meter band, half wavelength is approximately half that or 10 meters, approximately, 31C. 32, at what time of year is sporadic E propagation most likely to occur? Around field day, around the solstices, especially the summer solstice. And which insulating material commonly used as a thermal conductor uh, is toxic if broken or crushed? That's beryllium, beryllium oxide, 33A. 34, what device is usually used as a stable voltage reference? That's a Zener diode, 34B. 35, during a VHF-UHF contest, in which band segment would you expect to find the greatest level of activity? In the weak signal segment of the band with most of the activity near the calling frequency for the mode. And 36, how can radio frequency interference from an AC motor be suppressed? I wanted to give the gorilla sounds <laughs> by installing a brute force AC line filter. 36A. And why are received spread spectrum signals resistant to interference? Well, signals not using the algorithm are suppressed in the receiver. 37A. 38. The result of increasing the Q of a matching circuit, the matching bandwidth will decrease. Higher Q, narrower bandwidth, 38D. And 39, which amateur stations are eligible? All of them, depending on the class of the operator license held by the control operator, 
39a. 40. What is the effect of intermodulation products in a linear power amplifier? The transmission of spurious unwanted signals. 40c. 41. An SDR receiver is overloaded when the input signals exceed the reference voltage of the analog to digital converter. 41b. And 42. The characteristic of DIP packaging, DIP is dual inline package. A total of two rows of connecting pins, 42C. And 43, what limitations may the FCC place on an amateur station if its signal causes interference to broadcast reception? Quiet hours, the amateur station must avoid transmitting during certain hours, 43B. And 44, what might be indicated by a sudden rise in the radio noise across a large portion of the spectrum? A solar flare has occurred, 44B. And 45, why does a PN junction diode not conduct current when reverse biased? There's a depletion region and you widen it if you reverse bias it, 45B. And 46, how many watts are consumed in a circuit having a power factor of 0 0.71 and the apparent power is 500? It's 500 times 0 0.71, 355, 46C. And 47, what system matches a higher impedance transmission line to a lower impedance antenna connecting the line to the driven element in two places? That's a delta match, 47D. And 48, what type of coordinate system is used in a Smith chart? Resistance circles and reactance arcs. 49, characteristic of a pin diode that makes it useful as an RF switch. It doesn't have very uh, much capacitance, so RF can't leak through it. So it has low junction capacitance. When it's off, it's off, 49B. And 50, which of the following examinees, to which of the following examinees may a VE not administer an exam? Relatives of the VE as listed in the rules. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the end of the class, but it's not the end of amateur extra training. <laughs> Just want you to be reminded that as an amateur extra, when you get your upgrade, um, you have some responsibilities to help others in the hobby, to be an Elmer, to share resources, and to do unto others uh, as they, you would have them do unto you. So um, keep that in mind. If you would, please tell others about our channel. Uh, and uh, remember that classes here are always free. Uh, the handouts are always linked in the description box on the YouTube webpage for each video. We uh, don't charge for the class, but we do accept donations at my website, w4eey.com, and we use what uh, some people call the value-for-value value model. If the training was worth it to you, um, please donate to support future videos. Are there any questions or comments uh, from anyone here, please? Aside from thanks, I do have one background comment, if you'll hold on for a second. Sure. So you're playing music to us, but the Zoom oh, the algorithm is knocking music, it out. <laughs> pomp and circumstance. <laughs> you know, is that pomp and circumstance graduation song? I think it was, yes. Yeah. Hey, is it okay if we can email thread of uh, people in this class if we have questions or discussions? Absolutely. Yes, indeed. We're here for you. You can email myself. You can email Dave. You can email the group. Um, you've got all the contact information. I want to thank you all. You've been great students in the class, the, the folks on Zoom and the folks also watching uh, on YouTube. Uh, I get comments, emails and whatnot from you all. Appreciate it very much. Um, go get them. Go get your upgrade and be sure to email me back and let me know that you were successful. Thanks, Kevin. Fantastic job. Thank you, Dave.
Quick question, Dave. Mean quick question, Gary. Sure. Could you and Dave go back to chapter one and just quickly recap everything again for me? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. In your dreams tonight. <laughs> Seriously, thank both you guys. Uh, my test is April 17th. That's the, the most recent in-person exam I could get. I will drop you a line and let you know how it goes. Thank you again. Perfect. Yeah, you've been a great class. Uh, we really enjoyed uh, working with, with you all. This was our first experience, all virtual, and uh, we learned some things, but overall it, it went really well. And, and thank you all for your participation. What a great job you've done, really. Very impressive. Thank you. So, for the very last time, let me say, 73. See you on the bands, guys. In the extra portion. 73. 73 is all.